Mullet bikes, sometimes called mixed wheel size, use a larger front wheel and a smaller rear wheel, just like a motocross bike. I absolutely love the feel of a mullet bike. In fact, I love them so much, I mulleted all my personal bikes. You might be wondering, why on earth did I do that? Well, I'm going to explain the possible advantages of mullet bikes and then walk you through three different ways you could modify your bike to a mullet setup. I'm Will Soph and you're going to see a lot more of me on the Bike Radar channel. So why not give us a like and subscribe for more of the best mountain bike videos every week. I've been obsessed with mulleting bikes ever since I first rode one in 2014. I kept thinking about why they might be faster and tried to find out how to modify my own bikes. I had to know if running two differently sized wheels was actually better. Fast forward to today and I own not one, not two, but three bikes which all run a modified mullet setup. So here we are at Tapentas Bike Park in Pontypool with my bikes to show you how they handle some of Wales' most challenging trails. Perhaps we'll even inspire you to give your bike a mullet makeover. Full disclosure, you will probably void your warranty, so always seek advice from the manufacturer before you start experimenting. The first bike we're going to look at is my extra extra large 2018 Commensal Supreme DH. I picked it up secondhand and it came fitted with a pair of 27 and a half inch wheels as standard. I'm five foot 10, so why the double XL bike? Well, I looked at the geometry charts and saw that the 2018 double XL was between a 2019 medium and large. So I thought it would be about right. The first thing I did was take off the RockShox Boxer coil sprung fork which was fitted with a custom tuned Avalanche open bath cartridge. It was incredibly heavy and over damped. I replaced it with a Fox 49er, which at the time was considered to be the best 29 inch downhill fork you could buy. I paired it with a Hope Tech Enduro 29er boost front wheel shod in specialized rubber. Fitting a 203 mm travel fork with a 29 inch front wheel raised the front end and slackened out the head angle to about 62 degrees which was way too slack. So I slid the forks all the way through the crowns to their minimum to make the front end as low as possible. Then I fitted a two degree angle adjust headset I had from a 2009 Mondraker Summit. Of course, it wasn't that easy though, as I then realized I had to spin the inside down in the lathe to clear the inside of the frame and angle grind the outside down where it fouled on the fork arch. At the same time, I also fitted a Mork which stands for Mojo Offset Reducer Crown, made by suspension specialist Mojo Rising. This reduced the fork offset from the colossal 58 mil as standard to a more manageable 50 mil. After all this, I then managed to snap the linkage in the suspension, but thankfully Commensal sent me an updated version, which appeared after my bike was produced. Nice one, Commensal. Anyway, enough talking, let's see how it rides. Okay, we're here at one of the gnarliest tracks in Tapentas. It's used by World Cup downhillers such as Taylor Vernon and Laurie Greenland for their off-season training. And it's a great place to showcase a downhill bike. I think the mullet bike really comes into its own on some of the sharper corners where the going gets flatter. It can be hard to get a 29er turned in and the smaller rear wheel really shines here. Let's see how she rides. How fun this track is and how fast you just got to stay off the brakes and just trust that you're going the right way which is scary oh, that's icy.
Often, I like to go for a more chilled trail ride, and when I do, I pick my Cannondale Habit. It's a large size 2019 Habit 4 AL I bought secondhand as a frame. It came with a Cane Creek double barrel coil, which I hated. Not enough rebound control and it topped out horribly. I rode it for a while and it was good, fast and efficient. But of course, I knew I wanted a bike that was more playful. So guess what? I decided to mullet the little habit. I fitted a 27 and a half inch rear wheel and a longer eye to eye shock. The standard shock was 210 mil, but this Flow X2 factory is 216 mil eye to eye. I put travel limiters on the shock shaft to prevent the bike bottoming out on itself, but it still develops eight mil more travel than standard, bumping total travel up from 130 mil to 138. This also means that the bottom bracket height in the high setting is pretty close to the standard bottom bracket height in the low setting. Let's ride it. This bike is easy to drift thanks to the small back wheel and the low front end and it's also super easy to pop into a manual, perfect on jump filled tracks like this. This is perhaps the strangest and rarest bike in my collection. It's a 100mm travel limited edition specialised Enduro SX made in 2014. It's in size long and they only made around 100 of these or so I'm told. I always wanted one ever since I saw specialised pro rider Mitch Ropolato compete in the Sea Otter dual slalom on one. When I saw this frame for sale close to where I live, I had to buy it. The bike is set up for four cross and dual slalom and I've competed on it twice in the Malvern Classic where I won in 2020 and came second behind Scott Beaumont in 2021. The bike comes with 26 inch wheels but I fitted a 27 and a half inch front wheel into the 26 inch specific Fox 36 factory fork to make a mini mullet setup. The fork itself has been dropped to 120 mil travel with an aftermarket air shaft. The advantage of the mini mullet for me is that it makes the steering a little calmer and also slackens the head angle. It handles bumps a little more confidently and is easier to drift thanks to the extra grip from the larger front wheel. This bike is perfect for any kind of jump and manual duties. So we're here on one of Tepentis' perfectly sculpted jump lines to see how the little specialized handles it. Awesome, so you can see how this little specialised is easy to move around underneath me and is easy to pop into a manual thanks to the 26 inch rear wheel and short back end. The 27 and a half inch front wheel adds stability and extra traction on corners. So it really is the ideal bike for this kind of terrain. Well, what a day here in South Wales. I hope you enjoyed seeing these three mullet setups and I wonder if they've got your creative juices flowing about what you can modify on your own bike. Let us know in the comments. I will be posting more videos of wild and wonderful bikes, including tech and mods from the past and future right here on the channel. Subscribe to Bike Radar so you don't miss out. Thanks for the tiny rear wheel. The seat angle's far too slack and it doesn't climb for <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.